Good morning, everyone. My name is Ricardo Roberto, and this year I have the honor of leading the Government Affairs Committee for the Capel Chamber of Commerce. And one of the initiatives that the Chamber has is we have always tried to have candidate forums and have, since the pandemic, recorded interviews with the people who are pursuing public office. And we have no political agenda. We're business and we want to represent our local businesses and our local community. And so in that spirit, what we're trying to do is record interviews with local candidates and we try to put everybody in the best possible light. So, you know, we're very happy today to have with us Anthony Hill, who is running for the Capel ISD Board of Trustees. And thank you, thank, uh, Anthony, thank you very much for uh, giving us your time today. And um, I've got a few questions for you, but um, thank you for, for joining us. Thank you, Ricardo, I appreciate being here today and I uh, look forward to our conversation. Okay, so the questions that we have for you are, you know, we've only got a couple questions. Um, they're kind of comprehensive and we just like to ask you to fill this in as best you can. So the first one is simply, why are you running for public office? And what makes you think you would make a good Capel ISD trustee? And of course, you're the like incumbent, so I'm sure you have an answer to that. All right, well, um, just to let you know a little bit about me, I'm a 29 year resident here at Capel. And so I've been fully vested to, to be a member of the community. Um, I have a BA in accounting and an MBA in finance. Um, as a little bit of background into to my professional history, and I'm a financial analyst uh, by trade. So I'm running for this seat because, you know, it really provides me an opportunity to use my institutional knowledge that I've gained uh, in governance from a broad variety of decision making um, opportunities during my tenure here uh, on the board. And, and I will continue to take that knowledge gain from that, that institutional knowledge at local, state, and even national uh, level conferences that I've attended and apply it during board level decision making processes. And, and it really comes in about three flavors. One is as a trustee, uh, being a part of decision-making involved in a variety of financial matters has been uh, preeminent. Uh, growth in enrollment, um, the establishment of New Tech High at Capel as a choice high school program, development of the ILE program for inter interested parents and community members. That has been huge. Uh, when the board initially thought about that, we were trying to find ways to figure out how to get people um, more knowledge and information about the educational processes of Capel ISD and how the district runs. Uh, beyond that, it was also um, looking at how to um, broaden program options as well as we looked over the years, uh, that has been one of the things that we've always talked about. How can you broaden program opportunities for uh, our students, but also have the efficacy and longevity? And that came in the flavor of IB. Um, IB was two flavors. One was Pinkerton Elementary. Uh, we looked at that extensively to figure out what was necessary in order to have a program like that and how to sustain it. And uh, the principal over there at Pinkerton Elementary has done a fantastic job, Christy Mickelson. Then we looked at the high school, which was first prior to the IB program, even at Pinkerton. And the high school has done a fantastic job building and growing that program and even making some modifications that have taken place over the years based on the needs of the students in the community. Uh, there, Michael Brock is the current person leading that uh, program. He's doing an outstanding job. Then we've had to build new facilities because of our growth. Uh, when I joined the board, uh, it was about 10,000 enrollment, then it dropped a little bit. And then it has grown to 13,000 uh, plus, which is that today. And so Lee Elementary was the first in 2014 that was built. Um, and, and that was a fantastic facility. Uh, and so that pre uh, was another reason because our growth took place in the south portion of the district. And so with that explosive growth, Kenya Ranch came about as well in terms of growing that and to, to be a facility uh, to service that population and reduce the transportation and drive time for people there. And then you also looked at the new Capel Middle School West because we implemented, put in a ninth grade campus, we had to find a place for our middle school uh, West. And so we built a new facility for that as well. And when you do that, you had to remodel the ninth grade campus uh, to do some work there to get it up to speed to service high school uh, age students. Also, I've been a part of multiple redistricting plans. Uh, we've had 
uh, minor redistricting plans when we've added a school or we've had full redistricting plans. Uh, that takes a lot of work uh, to put in place and, and have that experience. Also, uh, looking at limited open enrollment, as we were looking around uh, in my earlier years on the board, we found that we have some additional capacity in the district. And so because of that additional capacity, um, we that it talked about it extensively and the board concluded that we were able to have limited open enrollment while also maintaining opportunities for people who actually moved into the city of Capel and the Capel School District uh, respectively. So my involvement in all of these activities uh, will allow me to continue to collaborate with my fellow board members that I've had uh, done over the from 2007 to the present and also to achieve some academic outcomes and strategic objectives, which were preeminent uh, as a part of the district. That was part one. Part two of it is during this tenure from 2007 through 2022, it is the ability to continuously be out there and be out amongst um, our parents, our teachers, getting around the campuses. I've had the opportunity to extensively go to elementary campuses, middle school and high school campuses in this district from 2007 to 2022, just because of the nature of being a trustee and being entrusted to support the entire district, because that's our responsibility, the entire district, uh, not just one level, but all levels. And that has come in the flavor of attending academic activities, attending fine art activities from choir, band, theater, the visual arts, and doing all of those things and building relationships with parents as well as those educators throughout that time. And because I've been able to do that, I've been invited to participate and do other things like read at elementary campuses across the district. And I read almost every elementary campus across the district. I've got a chance to meet all of our campus administrators and many central administrators and know people across those areas, um, as well as our educators. So on every campus from elementary to middle to high school and operational areas, I know people because of just being involved and being out there and being active. In addition to that, I've had leadership opportunities as well. And those leadership opportunities have allowed me to further build on those relationships at the local level in serving on many committees. So I've been the president uh, of the Capel ISD Board of Trustees uh, from 2011 to 2015 and 2016 and 2017. I've also served on the North Texas Area Association of School Boards. I've been the president there in 2016 to 18. I've served as a vice president and served as a treasurer. And because of those relationships with other trustees and other districts has given me a broader opportunity to understand things that we could do different and better because of those relationships and having that communication there. In addition to that, I've been invited to participate at the state level on the Task Risk Management Fund Board, and I serve as a chair of the Claims Committee currently. And in 2019, I had the privilege of serving on the TEA School Board Trustees Advisory Council when House Bill 3 uh, came about, and to, to engage there with other trustees in other parts of the state, and just to talk about things that are prominent and preeminent with everybody across the board. All of those experiences allow me to be the person that I am today um, to give back to the district holistically. But when I'm sitting down and listening to the presentations being made by staff to us, I take all of those, those experiences, bring them together and allow me to make those decisions that I need to make okay. in that regard. Can I, can I ask you, um, you know, you, you've covered a lot of stuff here and I think that just to summarize, um, just as you were just doing, um, that your experience and the network of contacts you have, your contacts with parents and the schools and across the state is, is what makes you, you know, a, a good uh, trustee. Can I move into the second question? But the one, the one part that I think um, I missed or, I, or I, I haven't heard much about is the, you know, what motivates you to run for office. And as an incumbent, what motivates you to run for office again and i'm going to ask you the second question now and i and i'd like to hear more of that you know why are you running for office piece i mean what motivates you to run for office but then what are the most important issues you see facing Capel isd and how will you work to resolve or promote those where the promotion of an issue is is more important than, than fixing or resolving it but again you know i'd say I'd like to hear a little bit more about what, what's, you know, why are you running for office 
um, especially as someone who's an incumbent who spent you know time in in the chair. Absolutely. Um, I'm running for office. I have the and I stated earlier that the institutional knowledge that I have gained has been uh, valuable. And what I'm seeing right now is um, education works in cycles, and we see a, I'm seeing another cycle of. When you look at our enrollment right now, enrollment is not growing as rapidly as it did several years ago. And so when you look at making decisions, you have to leverage that knowledge that you have. And I have that experience uh, of understanding when you're in a cycle, when you have flat enrollment, how are those decisions being made when you have flat enrollment? How do you go figure out the things that you need to do in order to maintain the competitive advantage that Capel ISD has had over the years? So those are the things that, that weigh on me to continue to participate because I do have that knowledge. I do have those relationships across the board and across the state with other trustees and other districts to leverage what we're doing collectively to support public education. When I get to my the second part of the question that you ask, it'll, it'll come together a little bit more in regards to that. So I'll jump over there right now to talk about that. So yeah, when you look at- We've got, we've got five minutes left, so, um, you know, you I'm going to bring it home. I'm going to bring it home. <laughs> so when you look at that, the most important issues, one is public education as a whole has taken and had a negative connotation of what it is and, and the effectiveness of it. And Capel ISD to be continued successful has to be valued as a vital educational uh, entity and asset. And also with that, the system as a whole, but also your educators have to be respected for their knowledge and experience. Those things are really, really preeminent and been issues. And that's why we see a, a number of people getting out of the industry, going into other industries and not just moving to other districts, they're leaving the industry completely. The other part of that is that you don't have a pipeline of people coming in like you did uh, 10 years ago. That pipeline has shrunk um, because of the negative connotations of what public education is. Now, Capel ISD has been quite successful um, because of the reputation and culture that it has, that people come here, families come here because of that reputation. But when you also look at it, you look at school funding. The school funding has continued to be an issue since I've been on the board and will continue to be an issue going forward in the future. It's very expensive for the state of Texas. But when you look at where we're at, we have to continually fund public education because there are new challenges that are coming forth out of the pandemic. Uh, we talk about learning loss. And so how do you build back and get those uh, young people back? For those that you can, um, if those are uh, people graduating out, you do as much as you can, but those younger people in the elementary, middle, and even upper um, high school uh, areas, you try to find those ways. And so you try to do that. Local control and accountability is another area. Uh, when you look at uh, where uh, education is and for trustees, uh, local control has been diminished uh, for trustees and even school districts. Um, they have a lot of more state mandates than they've ever had before. And that affects your accountability because now in order to have the accountability ratings, it limits you on some of the things that you can do. And so school districts have been like Capel ISD have been very fortunate to have talented, bright people, have great processes in place um, the creating a new vision for public education was in 2006 when Dr. Turner was here. And those things are still there, preeminent. How do you create these visions as networks of support to provide a place for teachers to be valued and respected and to um, leverage their knowledge and, and expertise, have systems in place that work holistically to get the outcomes that we need. And so when you look at the um, profile of a learner going from kindergarten or pre-K, to 12th grade, that's what we're looking at, having those systems in place to allow them to be successful. And last, mental health has been preeminent, and we know that. Um, and so those things are weighing on and impact the ability to be productive and get those outcome, academic outcomes that you're looking for. And our district, uh, through the ESSER funds, have hired a coordinator for um, counseling in social emotional learning, and that's going to be huge going forward um, and for the next for the for the future and uh and i think all of those things coming together are quite important there, there are issues that exist and out of those issues i think we have opportunities to be successful this, these are all great issues if i can just summarize it's 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 the reputation of public education and you know in a divided society you know i'll be the one to say it in a divided society it seems like it's more of a challenge um, to get public support. 
um, the funding because we know that we have issues um, as uh, you know, taxation issues are hitting Capel in terms of taxation at origin versus destination. Um, local control, um, yes, I will remain silent on that one. Um, and because um, again, I see that as being something that's because of our political divisions. And then mental health, I think that's huge. And having children in education right now, I mean, it just the, the effect of the pandemic on my children was, was very, very clear. And I think those are all important things to work on. Um, you know, we only have one more minute and you raised some really great questions and I wish we had a lot more time to talk about these because I need to go to more school board meetings, but how would you conclude? I mean, what is, what is you know, something that you think you really have to attack as, you know, if you are reelected? Yeah, I think the strategic plan that uh, we have the visioning committee work that's being done and the district has done a great job having four sessions to allow residents to come and provide opportunities to share their thoughts uh, on the things they think are most preeminent. And I think attacking that wholeheartedly once that is uh, wrapped up and concluded and fig figuring out uh, once they make the recommendation to the board to address those matters, to put the resources there, the human capital, the physical capital, and the time of uh, working collectively with this great community. And I have to give a shout out to our community. And for those that are on PTOs, PTSOs, um, the uh, booster boards, and just community members come out and evaluate the support of the district. That's what makes Capel great. It is working together with our council. Um, every place doesn't have that. And uh, to have the support and the knowledge and experience that this community has, um, it, it is beyond reproach of many places. And that's why Capel is a leader in education in the state of Texas because of the commitment of individuals like yourselves and the commitment of the community at large, even those that don't have kids that still contribute and pay into with their knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, thank you much for your time. Um, just the, the one last statement you made, um, when we ask businesses and people why they're in Capel, the number one is proximity to the airport for business. But the second factor that drives people Capel is the quality of the education. And um, so as, as a chamber, so we have always been extremely supportive of education. I mean, it's, it's essential for businesses to have a, a, a educated workforce, but it is, you know, um, something that, that drives people here and impacts our business community. Um, so thank you very much for your time. I know we probably could have talked a whole lot longer on all these issues, um, but good luck. Um, just want to remind um, people in the community that early voting starts on the 25th. And we do encourage everyone to vote. Um, it's, it's an essential thing to support our democracy and definitely have our community well represented in terms of what people believe. So thanks so much. Um, thank you and thank the chamber for hosting this event. Take care.